Right folks, how's it going? So there's Katie's. I thought today what I'd do in this one is mix it up a little bit and come and do a little bit of um mix it up between sort of maybe going in the woods but also I want to test out my hobo reel and uh, do a little bit of coastal foraging maybe a little bit of a uh, coastal cooking as it were so uh, and amongst other things so stay tuned folks So yeah, woke up this morning and we had our first frost. <laughs> Weren't expecting that if I'm honest. I know it was getting a chilling down a bit, but I didn't know it was going to be too, uh, too frostical proportions as it were. bit of a treasure trove of um, ash cut down over there so that'll be quite handy to get up here with my uh, rucksack and do some uh, do some wood gathering that'd be great for the log stores and also for uh, future carving projects and all that especially during the colder months when I'm at home and all the rest of it when I'm not out and about oh yeah you've got to take advantage of that situation ain't you especially when it's free I've been over this area for ages. I used to bring my dog over here. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that was a few memories from this place, if I'm honest. It actually looked like it's getting that green algae on it, sort of along the, uh, especially around the edges there. And it has got a green tinge to it. You know what the priority is, don't you? Put the brew on. <laughs> of course, of course. Just as we sit about, I've bought this sit about with me today. I'll have to use that. Oh, I did. I did. As you can hear is the ships. We're not far from the estuary yet. Yeah.
all the water's heating up then. I made myself a little while back. I'm not sure if I showed it actually. I made a little um, hobo reel. Um, I used a little uh, tube that had some sort of some ingredients, some condiments in it my wife had. I pilfered it off Mrs. C and uh, I thought that'd be quite ideal for uh, for a little hobo reel. So I'm gonna test it out today. I'm not guarantee that I'm gonna catch anything, but it'd be just nice just to get sort of keep me handy with using a hobo reel. Don't really use them that often. I've got a little sort of lure on the end of it, something that's sparkly and might you know sort of might attract the fish some kind so we'll see nothing too special got about sort of uh, I don't know what poundage of line that is probably about a 10 pound line on it something like that um, so yeah we'll give it a whiz in a little while but obviously I've, obviously I've got to have a brew first you know what I mean that's SOP isn't it and I've got a little pouch here that I'll keep it in keep it nice and uh, Nice actually isn't it, fits quite well, do like a pouch don't we? See that multitasking, stirring a cup and checking my pot to see if it's dry. Hey. Oh, my finger.
Well, I certainly ain't gonna need a bigger boat, am I? I think I might um, move up that end of the lake, actually. It's a little bit sedative there, innit? So uh, we'll move on, go somewhere else up there, try it out again. I was shocked. I used to be able to get in here. Um, I always used to bring the dog in this end and uh, she'd always get in the water in the lake. But um, it's proper overgrown. <laughs> I've got no way of getting in there. Brambles and God knows what else. So, uh, hmm, unless I can get in around the other side. Uh, I was literally just chatting to a guy there actually, chatting about if there was any fish in there. Because it is a quarry lake. Yeah, it is a quarry lake, and we're just saying there's one literally just over there, and then there's one over there as well, which I've done some filming for in the past. But um, I might just leave it at that. I can't get access to it. I might have a quick gander around the other side if I can. I want to go up on the estuary um, on the shoreline and see what I can forage. From what I can remember, there is definitely purslane up there. So uh, if I do find some, maybe I can do something with that. Some common mallow. Uh, from what I can gather, it's supposed to be good. It goes quite uh, glutinous and everything else when it's wet. Um, but it's supposed to be a nice thick enough for stews and stuff like that. Especially in survival books and stuff. You know, they like to sort of tell you to add everything to a stew don't they but um yeah some uh, common mallow there it's edible you know i mean obviously as a disclaimer and like i will say with all these plants that i sort of put on my videos you know don't take my word for it go and do your own work as well but um i mean most of the time i'll only sort of talk about what i sort of positively can identify but yeah common mallow there look this one don't really need any uh Introduce them, does it? it won't, well, majority, but if you don't know, it's Rose Hip, Dog Rose, Rosa Canina, and uh, supposed to have more vitamin C than an orange. Yeah, break that off, break it off at the stem there, and then thumb it open if you can, or get your knife or sharp implement or whatever, break it open. Take them seeds out, it's supposed to be sort of like a, an itching powder and also if you get them in your throat they will, it, they will itch and they've got quite a nice oh, crunchiness to them but once the moisture saliva mixes with them in your mouth they're actually not too bad, I like boiling them down with a tiny drop of water and making like a, a sort of jam if you like yeah, they've got quite a nice taste to them, I think. You know, considering our taste buds are bombarded with loads of, loads of stuff these days. Mm. Get them seeds out. Oh, yeah. Mmm. This one. I believe it's chicory. Um, what you can do with it, I don't know. I'm making an assumption that it was used. Obviously, chicory is normally what you have in coffee and stuff like that. How you would use this as a as an additive to your maybe dandelion coffee or whatever, I really don't know. I don't know if it's the roots that are used or anything else, but I do know this is chicory during the summer, especially along here. You get tons of it, absolutely tons of it. But a nice bright sort of what sort of light bluish lilac purpley sort of flowers and uh, but I've never actually tried using it or done any homework in regards to how you would utilize it sort of like into a, you know a concoction of salts 
Now when I first started on my journey of uh, sort of wanting to learn a bit more about plants and stuff like that this was the first one I kind of really kind of uh, contacted with if you like sort of discovered you know done a bit of homework on and all the rest of it and it's yarrow um, the Latin name escapes me now um, something to do with the Trojan Wars um, oh my god bear with us a sec Achillea millifolium or something like that it's something to do with Achilles apparently during the Trojan Wars um, Achilles would administer this I don't know if he would do it or his medics or whatever but this is something that they used to put into the bandages of the wounded soldiers and it's a great absorbent, a great absorbent creates a nice scab when you take those leaves off when they're dry or fresh they'll uh, I mean obviously I'm not going to do it in real time unless you want to try it yourself at home but get hold of some of this and if you ever you know keep a little tub of it and then if you ever cut yourself literally just spray it there, just pour this onto your cut okay and it will form a cut it will it acts like a hemostat almost it kind of forms a scab it might fall off and then you can put obviously depending on how severe your cut is um and it works i've used this stuff i've used it and it's really good i mean apparently it was used as a snuff it's supposed to be good as an insect repellent as well rubbed on your skin i, I might have tried it a couple of times not entirely sure if it's if it works or not but um, you know, you get it's got quite a, lo a long season, if anything, and you do get a lot of it around. There's clusters of it there. I mean, I used to get what I used to do. I've still got some of it at home in an old first aid kit. What I do is I gather loads of it, tie it, tie it up on the little stems there. I just used to hang it up in my shed, and then literally when I'll need to use it from the other end, I just literally peel off the uh, the little leaves there, and, and it is it is good stuff. I think it really works the hemostat. Never tried it for nosebleeds or anything like that. But um, yeah, and some people do boil it down and simmer it up as a as a veg as well. So or, or add it to your stew. <laughs> yeah, and I've literally just pulled that off the stem. It comes off so easy. And as I say, you know, you could even just just put it in a on a sheet of greaseproof paper somewhere where it's warm, and it will dry soon enough kind of loses its green colour a bit um, but crumbles down really well as I say to use for for a cut for cuts and stuff like that so a little demonstration from the top end just grab it nicely and it comes off freely in your hand all right There's the other lake there. I might take a little bimble in there and try my hand line in a bit. Oh, look, as you can see, we're not short of sea purslane in here. There's absolutely tons of it. Look, the whole area is carpeted with it. Absolutely tons. So uh, that's a bonus. Be collecting some of that up. We'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. Oh, serious sea purslane. Okay, it's a very juicy, succulent plant. You can eat it raw. Not too bad, actually. I, I don't mind it, actually. It's not too bad. It's high in antioxidants. And it's got beta carotene in it. And uh, vitamins and minerals. So, uh, you know... not a bad old plant really um, and when I was doing a little tiny bit of research on it I found that um, obviously it's grown quite throughout the world which is a good thing and secondly I was reading that um, in the Caribbean apparently what they do with this stuff is boil it up um, turn it into like a, a mulch of sorts um, and then apply it to um, bites that they get from some particular sea animal and uh, apparently it's supposed to alleviate some of the pain and help with the recovery and all the rest of it yada 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 so um, yeah I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect some of this up and uh, 
do a little bit of cooking with it. I'm going to make it into a, um, just use it as a vegetable. So yeah, not bad folks. And while I'm sitting here, <laughs> I noticed just sitting behind me with some sea beet. Now this contains quite a lot of uh, oxalate, so it can be sensitive to some people. Um, you're better off if you can trying to eat the uh, younger leaves. Um, and a lot of people say it's akin to spinach. You know, if you're going to use the sort of older leaves, then make sure that you boil them down and treat them the same way as you do spinach. But some people say they taste the same. You can eat them raw as well. Let's give one a, a nibble and see, eh? Yeah, that has got kind of a a slight spinachy edge to it, I suppose. Let's take another one. A little bit brown on the edge, sure. But yeah, so sea beet, another useful one. I'm just gonna get the foraging bag. I'll go and collect some uh, parsley. So I've just gathered a small amount and uh, we're going to cook that as a veg. I've got a recipe out of um, Roger Phillips' book. and uh, So the recipe I took from the Wild Food book by Roger Phillips. And there it is there. really is a simple few ingredients um, butter it said lemon I didn't have any lemon so I'm gonna have to use a lime which is the closest thing to it some chopped parsley a bit of pepper and some salt first of all what you've got to do is you've got to boil the um, or simmer just cover the, per uh, the purslane leaves in just a little bit of water um, simmer them for a short period of time then transfer them to a pan with the uh, chopped parsley, the butter, a little bit of salt and pepper and we'll see how it comes out. What I am going to do though is I'm just going to take the leaves that I collected, some of them are still on the stems so I'm just taking it so I've just got the leaves as opposed to the stems as well. I'm just going to use my little um, bot lid I'm kind of looking forward to it I mean they're all right as they are I mean they're very succulent and juicy leaves so I suppose just adding a few extra ingredients a bit of lemon or the lime juice as well a bit of salt and pepper will probably give it a little bit you know just a tiny bit more flavor I suppose yeah, it's probably quite handy to get hold of a few of these little bags. You can pick them up cheap as chips off of Amazon, get them all different sizes, and they're obviously really handy to use as uh, little foraging bags. Right, let's get that simmering, eh? Obviously, I want to get that on the heat. It's going to be a bit too bit too less to uh, handle so I'm going to use obviously the little uh... let's get that on there
Good. I won't put too much salt in there because they've got quite a salty taste anyway. test eh? That's a transformer isn't it? Yeah that ain't bad at all. Yum. Yeah that's all right actually. Especially with the lime and all the other ingredients in it. The parsley and how simple is that? Obviously no folks, do your own work, eh? Because some of you out there are allergic to it in some way form. That's really good. Right, I'm going to turn the camera off. So while I've been sitting here, the tide's come right in. And there's something breaking the light and I think it's a seal. Oh god, the GoPro ain't gonna be able to pick it up very well. I might have to use my mobile. Oh my god, I'll come back to you folks. Oh look. There it is folks. It's a seal. I can't get the magnification in it. Well, that was worth it just to come and see it break the water like that. Oh, God, my heart was beating like a good one. It's a shame that my phone didn't have a better magnification. The GoPro obviously hasn't. Um, but yeah, that's that's wonderful. Okay, well, anyway, it's time to go now. So uh, I'm going to move on, maybe go and chuck the hand line into that, um, into that little bit of a lake over there, see how we get on. Well, I had a look at that lake. I can't get close enough to it to be able to chuck my hand line in. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, so I'm going to call it a day on that video, folks. I hope you like that one. A um, bit of foraging, a bit of cooking. If you'd like to see a little bit more foraging uh, videos and me cooking some wild stuff, then please leave a uh, message in the description and uh, we'll see how it goes, yeah? So uh, thanks for watching, folks. And I'll catch you later. See you on the next video.